Hi, my name is Emma Williams and I'm the children's pastor at Grace Chapel. And like most of you, I am quarantining at home with my family, which includes my husband and our two kids. We have a six month old and a three year old. The three year old's name is Henry. He is very three and <laughs> Henry loves the moon. And if any of you had or have um, preschoolers who love something, you know that your life becomes a lot about that one thing. And so we do a lot of, where is the moon? Why can't I see the moon in the car? Is the moon following me? How can we get to the moon? Why do we see the moon in the daytime? Which I had to look up because I couldn't explain. Um, you know, he when he sees the moon, he's so excited and he jumps up and down and he'll we'll say good night to the moon before we go to sleep. He just really loves the moon and as a parent, uh, of a child who loves something, I'm trying to do my due diligence and learn more about that thing. And so whenever I see things that come up about the moon um, in the news or on Facebook or whatever, I try to pay attention to it. And so this weekend I saw that a super moon was coming. It was actually last night, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And I didn't really know what a supermoon was. I've seen it before. I feel like now that we have access to the internet, we see all of these things about a supermoon and a ultra moon and you know. Anyway, so there was there was a supermoon coming up. And so I looked up what is a supermoon. And that really just means that as the moon orbits, a supermoon is when it comes closer to the Earth than usual or than average. And what was special about last night's supermoon is that it was the closest to the Earth that the moon will come this year. And so it appears the largest that it will appear in 2020. And uh, we went out and looked at it last night and looking at it reminded me of scripture from Psalm, Psalm eight. Uh, I'll read the third and the fourth verse. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? I don't know what caused Henry to love the moon. And I'm not sure that he does either. He couldn't put his finger on it, but I think it's probably this mix of this innate draw toward the beauty of the moon and sort of the mysticism of what is this thing up in the sky that shines so brightly and also kind of the comfort of it, that it's always there um, and that it always stays with us. Each night, the moon comes up and it follows us across the sky into the darkness of the evening. And as we enter into the most holy days that we have as Christians, into the days that we are remembering Jesus' life leading up to his death, um, we think about how Jesus was living into that darkness. He came into Jerusalem knowing that he would die. And he came to eat dinner with his friends knowing that it would be his last. And he gave this commandment of ultimate love, knowing that the people who he loved the most would betray him and would deny him. And Jesus had continued to live that week into his life and into his ministry knowing that he was moving into darkness. And I think that this Holy Week, this Holy Week, that we feel a little of that more than we have before, because we know that the hardest times are still ahead of us. But what choice do we have? We have to keep on going. We wake up every morning and we put one foot in front of the other, we have to keep going. We walk farther into the darkness, but just like Jesus, we know that we aren't alone. We know that we keep going, even though we know it'll be hard because we follow a God who is greater than that darkness. And scripture says that a light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. What a gift it was for, to have this super moon, to have the moon that came closer to our home than it will this year. We needed that. We needed a reminder of that great and awesome light. 
And as the moon keeps us company as we move through the darkness, we know that Jesus walked in the darkness and knew that God would be there in the end. Jesus knew that death was not the end of his story, that resurrection would come. And as the people of God, we know that the end of our story is not death, but new life in Christ. Let it be so. Amen.